This episode is brought to you by Omax Health. More on that later. Let's get into the do. You're watching The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler at your mom's house. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. We're over here at Studio Jeans doing it at your mom's house. I'm Ryan Sickler. Ryan Sickler on all social media, ryansickler.com. Sign up for the email uh, newsletter that'll be coming out with all my dates this year. Also, go over and subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. Make sure you do that. You know, uh, start putting up some more stand-up clips, stuff like that over there. Uh, the Honeydewpodcast.com is the website uh, for the show here, where you get your merch, you know, social media links, all that stuff's over there. Uh, and what we do here every week is we highlight the lowlights. These are the stories behind the storytellers. And uh, today I'm very excited to introduce for the first time here on The Honeydew, ladies and gentlemen, Taylor Tomlinson, everybody. Oh. Yeah! I love that, the clapping from the, the sound booth. Yeah, we're all excited yeah, This is What a team. The what, what it's a, a team. hell of a team. It is a hell of a team. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I'm excited. I'm very excited too. I already have my arms crossed and on the already on the table. bracing I'm yourself ready, for the go. trauma. But before <laughs> you're the first, let's to say get that. into it. <laughs> um, before we do, please plug everything you'd like. Okay. Get it all out there. Uh, at Taylor Tomlinson on everything, ttomcomedy.com for tour dates. Uh, I'm always on the road, and my one hour uh, Netflix comedy special, Quarter Life Crisis, is streaming now. So Ooh. check that out. Congratulations. Thank yep, you. Yep, yep. Oh, and I should say, my, I didn't even say my fucking dates. Go to RyanSickler.com. <laughs> we got got uh, Phoenix, Vancouver, Edmonton, Minneapolis, Boston, a few other stacks. Go. go wow, off there. the top of your head like that. But I don't remember my damn dates, and I Still, should be Still, even that, I'm like, I know yeah. I'm in D.C. <laughs> I try to go everything regionally. else. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> um, all right. I, I really want to uh, get to know you better. So first of all, let's start with where you're from. I'm from California. Oh, you are mm -hmm. from California. I'm from California. I grew up in like Modesto, Stockton okay. up until I was like nine. And then I was in uh, Temecula and Riverside. I know Temecula yeah. well. I have a friend yeah. that lives down there. I like Temecula. It's grown over the last yeah. 15 years. It's a great place to be from. Like it's a good place to grow up if you just want to like, I don't know, go to the mall and play very inclusive soccer. Or yeah, it's like I mean, everyone has fifty dollars gets to try to make a goal. Like it's not, you know, it's just like a, it's very suburban. Have you done the casino down there at all yet? Like, have uh, you gone? Have you gone home to do your no. club yet? They haven't asked. <laughs> really? Haven't, no. Or I haven't been. Temecula. Sent I know. Pachanga. You know Pachanga. Screw you guys. I don't Come want on, to Pachanga. anymore. Come on, Pachanga. Now you missed your chance, Pachanga. Yeah, I'm now never you coming back. Your chance. Oh, who wants to do that? Who wants <laughs> to perform no for all their parents' <laughs> friends? <laughs> Parents would have a client night and then yell at me after. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, so, okay, Northern California. Is that considered Northern or is it like mid? What is Modesto, yeah. Stockton? Yeah, that's Northern, Northern right? California. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and what is it like? Is it like country up there more? Yeah, where I grew up, it was more like I didn't really grow up in Stockton, like the city part. I grew up in like the rural part where there were like orchards and stuff yeah. until I was like five and that was probably the best part of my childhood We're just like you only have five sort of, good years of it uh, yeah God, i'm sorry i don't know if, is it like that for most people though that the first five years are great and then like stuff starts going down i don't you know i i think it just gets you when it gets you yeah but <laughs> i um i say like like slender man or something yeah just coming when it's coming you know what i yeah. mean <laughs> um i i don't know i if you go back and look on paper, it, I always think about this at my childhood. Like it was pretty traumatic and shitty. Yeah. But also, I fucking really did have a good time. Yeah. I, I really did. I know, like, I look at a piece of paper and go, "Oh my god, oh that's terrible, terrible. Oh yeah. god, oh my god, oh my god." But but I really do. I guess the love I got from the right people, and then also being able to have, do you have siblings? Mm -hmm, I have three sisters. Are you close? Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, yeah. and that was huge for us too, and, and extended family, like cousins that were very close, and I really, who always made it fun, and they were suffering through the same shit. These are all yeah. the same family members and stuff, so. How many siblings do you have? I have two brothers. And have you're a, all really close? Yeah, we're close. Yeah, see, yeah. that's the nice thing. That's 
one of the silver linings of having like childhood trauma when you have like multiple siblings is you all just kind of like like y'all get really really close in a way that I don't think other siblings do. No. I mean, I have friends or I've dated people who are like, I wish I had with my brothers or sisters what you have with yours. And I'm like, I don't know. Do you like your parents? Yeah. Because <laughs> there's only one way to get this prize. Yeah. And you Did gotta... you have to give your grandma CPR? <laughs> you didn't? Well, you're probably not going to be this tight at the fucking it's Thanksgiving. Like the... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like the last Avengers where someone has to get thrown into the pit yeah. to get the stone. Yeah. That's yeah. what it costs. That's what it costs, guys. You want to be? The, you want to talk every week? Oh, man. You got to go through some shit. Yeah, if you want that truth. group text chain... <laughs> With all those fun memes, yeah, I mean, that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to just jump in this group text. <laughs> the trauma therapy yeah. in this group text here, nah, nah, you gotta earn that. And you guys all have a probably d dark sense of humor. Oh yeah, right. You're oh, the first yeah. people to us. make those jokes. All of, we had a family death pool. Yeah, you know, we really did. <laughs> Everyone was dying, and we were like, "Jesus Christ!" You know, and I used to call. I talk about it on my first album. I yeah. really would call my aunt Margaret. I'm like, "How you feeling?" She was like, ah, "You know," I was like, "I got you this year." She's like, "You son of a bitch! You son of a bitch!" But see, eventually, and here it is now. You know, I'm 46. We're on deck now. Yeah. Like the younger kids are gonna start betting on our asses. That's you know? hilarious. It's a tradition you've yeah. passed down. We're You're like, like, "What if, when we what were if I die, but I'm brought back and I bet on myself? Can I keep the money?" <laughs> Can I keep the money? That's if a legit I'm, question. How in our long family. do I have to be dead <laughs> yeah, right. before I'm resuscitated and then to keep, keep the cash? <laughs> <laughs> he got the fifteen hundred on a technicality. <laughs> I was done for eight seconds. Y'all saw it. There's paperwork on it. I'm, I'm taking the check. I'm taking the check. We're gonna get a second opinion. <laughs> yeah, that so, is so funny. Do it, you? I have another question. Please. When you guys have, when you guys brought in like significant others were they uncomfortable with the jokes you would make yeah i or mean did you have to kind of like warn that like no we can make these jokes and you just have really to get question. used to it yeah they were and still are um because they just like that part of their life's over they didn't go through that shit then it yeah. doesn't matter what they go through now that their teenage version of themselves didn't go through that shit so right. like it's you know, second nature to us. And even, it's funny because, um, like when we argue though, we go hard too, just as hard yeah. as we love, like we will go at it. And I, uh, <laughs> so my yeah. younger brother was getting married in, uh, Jamaica and it was expensive and not everybody could afford it. And he got upset with us cause we said that, but we didn't really mean to be dicks about it. We're like, look, you know, it's, it's an expense. We're definitely going to be there, but like some of the cousins aren't going to be able to make it, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, this is where we want to go. Like it's yours. It's yours. So we get there and everybody's a little bit on edge and, um, we're checking in and we all have to give our credit card or whatever. And they're like, well, the rooms aren't ready. We're going to hold your cards. I'm like, okay, whatever. So we go, we're partying, we're having a good time. And there's a lot of tension, you know, as some weddings tend to have. And, some weddings. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, which we'll get to. <laughs> um, but a friend of ours, now, if these are like our, we go back to like, and it's all from their trauma too. We all go back to like sixth and seventh grade. So they're there and they rent this villa up on the hill and you got to hike this hill to get up to it. But it's beautiful. So I'm up there drinking and I know their wives, everybody's so fucking we're so tight from all this bullshit and mm -hmm. we go back to kid you know childhood and all their wives are great wives they're they're great moms and they're all saying stuff like why well, play with the kids at night and blah and my brother and i are just sitting there and after whatever that is they say my my brother go do you remember when mom used to read to us at night and i go no <laughs> And, and their husbands laugh because they've known us and my yeah. mom since, you know, sixth grade. Yeah. And then they would talk about it, And my brother's like, do you remember when mom used to play board games with us? And I'm like, mm -mm, no. <laughs> and we would just keep going through. Well, my brother ends up getting pissed off about something. And they tell he he comes up and disrupts the whole fucking night. And he's screaming at me. He's like, it's fucking bullshit. They charge my credit card for your shit. He's just going nuts. I go, hey, I'm right. I'll, I'll, what do you, I'll send you the money right now. I'm here. Like, I didn't charge the card. Yeah. And his wife is trying to, she's going, Derek. And he's like, no, I got to get this out. You know, and he's just, <laughs> it's, it's on the hill. 
It's <laughs> quiet as shit. Everyone at the wedding can hear this whole thing. And oh. he is screaming like, this is the last time we travel together. I'm like, this is the first time we've ever traveled together. <laughs> I can't believe it. I go, what's the big deal? I'll pay you the money. It's not a big deal. What he's going, and his wife's going, Derek, he's going, no, I'm tired of shit. Let me just get this out. And he's screaming, screaming, screaming. <laughs> and finally she goes, Derek, we owe him. They put our charges on his card. I said, oh, is that what? <laughs> oh, man, he was humiliated. But he's screaming at me. He's like, you fuck face. But that's, but that's how we argue right yeah. and the wives are like oh my god and their husbands are like it's okay this is how, this is how they do it this is how they do it <laughs> he fucking leaves he leaves and goes down and he's gone for like 20 minutes and everyone but me and their husbands are super uncomfortable like I, i'm like sorry about that that's just how like yeah i was like he'll probably be back in a little bit and like i don't think he's going back and then he, his wife makes him trudge back up that hill and he comes up and <laughs> The sweetest retribution of all is that he had to apologize, but he was so out of breath. He's like, I just wanted to say like, he's, <laughs> he's like, and I was like, no one fucking give him any drink. No one gives him water. If anyone gives him water, I'm going to be pissed off. You fucking apologize right now. Like that. He was huffing and puffing. I had to suck. Like, just want to say, I'm really embarrassed. <laughs> I, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I yelled like that. Uh, I made a mistake. And I was like, this is fucking awesome. That's this hilarious. Awesome. Yeah. So we, yes, we're, we're super tight and we'll fight like that though, too. Yeah. Do you fight with your siblings? We do. Uh, the, the, the interesting dynamic with us is my, my siblings don't go, let them do it. Let them figure it out. We all try to mediate depending on who's fight. There's four of us. So it's like, I mean, what are the age ranges? Little women. Uh, it's <laughs> it's every two years, so it's it's twenty, twenty two, twenty four, twenty six. Okay. Uh, and so it's it's interesting because we'll go through phases where there will be two of us that are butting heads more than usual. So like, and my dad, my dad says that he wanted two because there were two it was just him and his brother my mom had three in her family so she wanted three and once they had three my dad is like we need to have four so that everybody has a buddy because if we just have three someone's gonna be left out so it did kind of feel like that growing up where like me and my sister who's two years younger than me we joined forces and were best friends and then my two youngest sisters joined forces and then the for our city in a jv yes yeah, exactly and then for a little bit my second to youngest sister kind of dropped off and was like you know hanging out with friends and being like a little more of a wild child or whatever and there was like the group text with me and two of my younger sisters and then my third sister kind of like came back a few years ago and now we're all together um but yeah, I mean, there will be, there will be times that like, you know, me and, uh, the 22 year old are just like, I'm like, I can't, like, I can't, like, I guess we're just not going to be close. Like there was a few years like that where I'm like, I guess we just don't have anything in common. I guess we're not friends. And I guess I'll just see her at holidays. And then, uh, my youngest sister and I, we've been butting heads recently and it's because we're really similar and she hates it. When I say that she's like, that's not true. I'm nothing like you. I'm like, we literally have the same face. Like we look alike. We're <laughs> oh, stubborn really as huh? hell. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We look so similar. My middle two sisters, they, they look similar and we're kind of bookending it with my dad's genes and my middle two sisters look more like my mom. And yeah, me and my youngest sister, we got into it because she was upset that like a trip we were all taking was kind of falling apart and she started getting really upset and I was kind of going like okay well it's not a big deal like we'll figure it out and she felt like that was being very dismissive which I can understand and if I were upset I would probably feel the same way but at the time I was just like I'm presenting solutions like I, I don't understand I was like a bad boyfriend where I'm just like I'm just solving problems babe <laughs> You're just trying to bitch. <laughs> what? Uh, I'm, this is. I said we could go to Walmart right now and get the pictures printed. Like, and I, I, it like came to a head. And I mean, talking about tr everything coming back to trauma. I mean, it it got down to it where we get to like the the seed of everything because it's it doesn't go just like 
I'm mad at you for this thing you did and the way you talk to me right now. It's like, you always do this. Yep. You're exactly like dad. Yep. You don't understand. I never knew mom, like all this stuff. And you're like, oh my gosh, like what have, this is more, th there's like some roots to just this trying shit. to get candles. Yes, okay, I'm just, I just want to get some candles and get the hell out of Walmart. But right. I get it. And so when she finally, like, get, we get down to like all of it, I'm like, yeah, I mean, I totally understand. But also, oh, I just said the thing in the wrong tone of voice. And now it feels like everything's blowing up. But I fight the same way. And so my middle two sisters are trying to like mediate and they're trying to make it work so the trip doesn't fall apart. And like trying to play both sides right. where I'm like, she said I yelled at her. I didn't yell at her. And my sister's like, okay, you didn't yell at her. And my youngest sister's like, she said she's being dismissive and got angry. And I'm like, I'm not getting angry. My other sister's like, you seemed angry. And I'm like, you're taking her side. So everybody has to pick sides. And they're like, we just, can everyone just hug before we all drive home? <laughs> because nice. we all live yeah. an hour or two away from <laughs> each other. And we all have a fear that if we drive home, we're going to die and we don't want to die on bad terms so everyone has to hug before we leave like it's just all steeped in the fear and the trauma and yep. i mean that closeness is there from it but also like you said that that different way that you fight on that like real like cellular level of like i'm gonna it's more than just this yep. like it is it's intense it's for hard sure. for other people to get to you know like yeah. i i say my daughter's mother uh, she's super sensitive yeah and i come from arguments where people are like hey fuck face and i don't <laughs> and i just let them finish the sentence yeah. you know what i mean like i'm like uh, well wh what is it you know <laughs> fuck face so here reporting for duty she is, she's like i clearly you're talking to me <laughs> You know, <laughs> and I come from that. Yeah. So when she's like, that's kind of harsh or whatever, I'm yeah. like, is it like, you know, so I, I and also I it's funny because I say my daughter's mother instead of my wife, probably because yeah. of that shit. Like I come from much more uh, intense shit where I, I'm like, oh, that's are we talking about tennis shoes right now? Yeah. Like this is we don't have a problem. You know yeah. what I mean? Like. I come from fuck face, you know, and hey, dick face. <laughs> I listen. hail from fuck face yeah, mountain. I mean, come on. <laughs> um, all right, so let's go back and talk about uh, what happened. I know so, we just got into it. We didn't even okay. I like the, build I, a foundation. We're just like, here's the house. Here's the house. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go for a tour. Yeah. What? So you're in Stockton, Modesto. You're mm -hmm. born. All of you born there? Yeah. Okay. All of us were born there. Uh, but our mom died when we were two, four, six, and eight years old. Ugh. So, um, what's been interesting is as we've gotten older, everybody has dealt with it in very different ways. Whereas like my PS, I have 20 years on you. Get ready to fucking cry in your late thirties at the grocery store. And oh shit. my yeah. gosh. Just, it's, you it's, keep it's, expecting it to get better. Like I said that to my grandma. It gets better, but Does it, it? it, yeah, but it's just like jumps in a parking lot sometimes yeah. or something. Some car will ride by and you hear a song you're like, Oh my God, yeah. why? I'm 39. <laughs> I'm 39. Yeah. But wait, what happened to your mom? How she did had she cancer? Pass? Uh, oh. Pretty standard. Uh, <laughs> it's like it's so Standard. fucked up that you go like look we had warning it wasn't like it wasn't you know some big like you you downplay what happened to you because it's what happened to you so you're like she's sick for a few years and you know we had support from the church and i mean we knew it was coming and like i hear people who's parents or whoever died suddenly and i'm like oh that's so much worse like i can't imagine but wait so, your young, the youngest was two. She was two, yeah. So, so her whole cancer, life, like right after having, she must have right yeah. pretty quickly. I would she imagine she had, she was having, from what I understand, she was having like really bad like night sweats, and she went to the doctor a few times, and he was just like, it's hormones, like it's not anything to worry about. It's hormones, which is uh, the terrifying part about being a woman is like anything that happens to your body, yeah. it's either it's hormones, hormones or cancer. <laughs> And so you're that's just all like, you got. All right. I either <laughs> either my cervix is trying to murder me or it's just, you know, it's an off month and your boobs hurt. Um, you just never know. But you got to get scanned regardless. Uh, but her doctor didn't didn't know. And then they finally figured it out. And from what my family tells me, her doctor felt real bad. I mean, I mean, whew, that's a rough one. So she had oh. Hodgkin's lymphoma. Oh, um and by the time they found it i i don't even know what stage it was but yeah she had been sick for a while 
and then was probably sick for you know another year and a half before she died would be my guess Jeez. so she had i think she had two rounds of chemo again i don't really know i mean right, that's the other eight. thing i was eight I, I didn't get all the you know people weren't updating me like when he came in with the chart he wasn't like is everyone here where's taylor tell her to put down the book come on we're gonna do a white blood cell yeah. cap come here <laughs> you reading harry potter all right i got a real story for you come yeah, here this, this right here this is once upon a time there was a sick mom and it's yours <laughs> spoiler alert uh <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I didn't even understand what was going on. And were I you think, in and out of hospitals? Do you remember mm -hmm. any of that? You were? Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember at one point in third grade, she was maybe going to have to go to Stanford for like a more experimental treatment or something. And I, it didn't end up happening, I don't think. But at the time, I remember telling my teacher and like people at school, like, I'm going to have to go to Stanford with my mom. Cause like, and I told my dad and he was just like, you're not go like, it's his mom's thing. Like, we're not, you're not going to have to go to the hospital with mom. Um, so you just don't know what's going on at all. And again, I hear like, you know, I lost someone at 16. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so much worse because you understand what's happening. But there's also something hard about not knowing what's happening because when you're eight and someone dies, you kind of don't even feel like it happened. Yeah, I have to imagine that, right? Like, yeah, because you don't know anybody else that's happened to it. You're like, this is something that happens in Disney movies. Right. Am I the Little Mermaid? Like... <laughs> Am I about to get hot? Because I'll go to Hot Topic and get a seashell bra right now. Right now I'll go get it. And then you hit puberty. I I started wearing a bra like months before my mom died. And so like ever oh, the shit hit the fan. Girls too. I, oh Man. my god. I don't know. I don't know if my I can't prove that my period was triggered by trauma. <laughs> But that is terrible. But because my body was like emotionally, you're bleeding. Let's just make it match. Because I got my period real early, and I always thought it was because of all the milk I drank. But now I'm like, ooh, <laughs> was it that or <laughs> you just don't know? But yeah, I mean, it was it was so strange to have it be happening. And then my dad got remarried fairly quickly. I mean, my mom died in August and my dad got remarried in June. Whoa. And so it was a quick turnaround. And that's when we moved to Southern California. All right. Can I ask some questions? Mm -hmm. yeah, I have absolutely. questions I want to ask. Uh -huh. All right. Your, your mom's last days, were, were they at home? Were they, they were in a hospital? Home. They were at they home. They were at home with hospice and she was like, not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not know. even there. She's just like a shell. So who's helping your dad with four children while your mom's going through this? Do you have grandparents up there? Like yeah, extended family? Yeah, we have grandparents family? up there, my mom's sister and her husband, and they're five kids. They have four daughters Holy and then a boy shit. at the end. Yeah, and their four daughters are like, each one's like a year behind each one of Man. us. Man, and that's your mom's sister? That's my mom's sister. Okay. Um, And they were like two years apart. So they were super close in the way oh. me and my sister are really close. So... I mean, to this day, the person I feel the worst for is my aunt. I mean, my uncle, too, because she had an older brother. My mom was a middle kid. You're still close with but, them. But, um, yeah, we see them when we go up there. I mean, we're not as close as we would have been if we'd stayed right. yeah, living, sure. you know, around the corner. Um, but, yeah, my mom's, most of my mom's family um, was, was living near us. And then we had a nanny who was like a woman we went to church with. Um, who's an older woman named Joanne, who we loved. And so there were a lot of people. And then we were, you know, my family was involved in church. So, so there was a lot, lot of people, people helping out, helping out and bringing meals and donating money and stuff. So there was definitely like a support system there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's who, that was who was like kind of supporting my dad. And there's, you know, prayer circles and everyone loves my mom and all that stuff. She's very like beautiful and charismatic and funny and like you know all the what's things. her name angela angela yeah so if someone's named angela that'll fuck me up when yeah. you're talking about carmela oh your, man your grandma's name that angela's a popular one too <laughs> you'll you'll be hearing that one yeah, yeah that's oh my gosh up. i mean they're not she to me her feet she had like you know sort of like fair skin and dark hair and was like big eyes and very beautiful so sometimes an Anne hathaway movie will fuck me <laughs> up <laughs> Sometimes Ella enchanted's <laughs> on TV in a hotel, and I'm like, okay, uh, we gotta do comedy in a minute. Like, <laughs> I got a rally here. Yeah. Goddamn. Do you? You said your uh, your two middle sisters look like your mom. They look like my mom. Do yeah, they ever, have freckles and the. Does that ever 
catch you off guard when you look at them and do you ever see your mom or yeah know? i think so and i growing up i know i really wanted that like i asked my dad that a lot i'm like am i anything like mom and he's like nah you look like me and i'm like all right well <laughs> that's, that's, that's not what i wanted to hear <laughs> right, like, yeah. I'm like am i anything <laughs> like mom and he goes you're a good writer and i'm like cool i guess <laughs> like that's it. all i got he wasn't like you're beautiful and funny and you got everything i fell in love with her like he's just like you're right good like that's all i got <laughs> and i'll be like no you know Paige and Bryn, they look like mom uh and then my youngest sister i think has a similar she has a similar um yearning to to know more about my mom and feels like she didn't get to know her, but she really didn't get to know her. I mean, right. she has no She's memories. Too, yeah, not even a memory of, of her. her. Just she pictures is, and... Just pictures and videos and... What? Oh, so many questions. I want to know what your dad's like, but I wanted... Um, I want to ask you, like, who's who in the family is... Because we have one person, basically, that's left, and she's oh, wow. 75 now, and she's, like, the key to... At this moment, I I still talk to her. I can call her and say, "Hey, who was blah?" You know what I mean. And I can yeah. get the history of the family from her. Yeah. Because she's it. So who? It's a lot of pressure on her. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. Oof. And I was like, "Stay in, stay in good health for yeah. Christ's sake." Take your vitamins. What? Who in your family is that for you guys with your mom? Is there someone outside of your dad that you could call and talk to that can really tell you about? Like, I mean, your aunt, obviously, right? They mm. they grew up together. No, not so much. I could, but we. She gets so upset. She does. She Still, gets huh? really sad. Yeah. And I mean, I've, my cousins have even said, like, if you bring up certain things, like, mom will, mom will cry. And, like, I'd never want to make her upset. No. How old um, was your mom, by the way, when she passed? 34. Oof. Yeah. God, that's so young. I know. And she had four kids by 34. Yeah. So how old was she? Eight. So 20, what, uh, six she started roughly mm. having kids. There's four of you. 25. You're eight, 25. 25. Because wow. I turned nine a couple okay. months after oh. she died. So yeah, I do you think remember that's that right. birthday? Uh, I don't remember that birthday. I remember the first day of fourth grade. I remember that. And, Why? And Why do you remember? Because that I remember so standing up and saying the Pledge of Allegiance and looking at all my classmates standing and going, "I wonder if anybody knows my mom died." Oh, like that's what I just remember yeah. that moment, and I never thought to ask my dad this until really recently because of something one of my sisters said where she remembered going back to school after it happened. And I, I remember I talked to my dad and I was like, we, I was like, yeah, I was like, we realized we didn't know if our teachers knew or if anyone in class knew. And he's like, he's like, oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't tell anybody. And I was like, oh yeah. And he was, he's like, yeah, he's like, I just didn't, he was like, there was so much stuff to take care of. I didn't think of it. And then he called me back like an hour later, like crying, just like, I'm so sorry. I should have told your teachers. Like, I don't know Man. why I didn't think it was so heartbreaking. And I was like, dad is fine. Like you had a lot going on. Like, yeah, it's okay. Kids, yeah. yeah. Um, and I got, I got sent to the, I also, my dad has kind of a bad memory. So I don't even know if that's true. Like maybe he did tell them. Um, cause I got sent to our school therapist, so I don't know if maybe he did tell them and forgot, or if I was just running my mouth because I, I, I remember telling people in middle school that my mom had died and I was still figuring out how to tell people. I remember telling a kid in seventh grade that my mom had died and he was like, you're lying. And I said, what? no, why would I lie about that? And he goes, cause you're laughing. Why would you be laughing? And I was like, I don't know why. And then I saw the dark night years later and the Joker is laughing while Batman beats him to shit. And I go, oh, that's why I was laughing. <laughs> that's right. And yeah. That was what it was. <laughs> okay. Uh... <laughs> Yeah. It took a few years, but Heath Ledger cracked it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I just remember like going, I'm still I can't like that. Me. When I'm in pain, I like, even if it's like I break my ankle or something, yeah. I still go, oh, yeah. oh it hurts. Oh, yeah. right. I, I'm like, what is wrong with me? But yeah, everything's wrong. Everything's yeah, wrong. Everything's You're like, wrong. something's broken in there. And I'm like, I didn't think when my mom died, I'd have to convince this piece of shit, Justin. <laughs> yeah. That she had actually, I'm like, you want to see her ashes, motherfucker? Yeah. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, we're 12. Oh, my God. You just made me remember something that I haven't. I, I'm so sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, it's so weird because 
right before my father died, a friend of mine in high school told me his mom had died and no one believed him for some reason either. Yeah. And one day we're walking home and he's like, she's buried in this cemetery. And everybody's like, no, she's not. And he took <laughs> us to the grave. And we were like, oh my God, she's right there. <laughs> Was everyone like, oh, we're sorry, they're embarrassed. And we were just this like, is, oh, uh... <laughs> let's go play some football. <laughs> Oh, Sorry, man. man. He took Our us bad. to the headstone. I just, just may so remember funny. that he did. Because why? it is weird people don't believe. I, I don't know. I guess they don't want to believe something like that. Yeah. Oh, it's that's so what, fucked up. You, you know, know what it is? It's for the same reason. They, got, they don't want. They don't want it to happen yeah, to them. them. And if it happened sure. to you, it can happen to them. That's right. And that's just not something mm -hmm. they can let in. I remember a, a great friend of mine, um, his his mom was like my mom, and her daughter died in a car accident. Two kids, actually, 16, oh. a boy and a girl, Anthony Emilio, and her name's Kelly Patterson. They got hit by a guy, and back then, their heads collided. They were oh. buckled, but their heads hit. Oh. And um, anyway, I remember some parents wouldn't go, Yeah. and I remember talking to other Those parents are like, they're looking at this person like this is our worst nightmare our yeah. kids dying and here's two of them right here and it was yeah. just it shook that town you know like mm -hmm. fuck and then a few more it happened and you could just see like but um yeah i, I it's funny you said at 16 i was more aware and you're right because i remember my our uh, dad's funeral was an excused absence from the school because mm -hmm. my brother and I are twins and then my younger brother was he wasn't in school yet but we were pretty we were played all the sports all that shit and when I got back to school I have never I've never felt like bombing on stage has felt this is what I'm saying it yeah. seasoned you for fucking life bombing yeah. on stage has felt better than the first day I went back to school and I just felt like I knew it came from a good place from everyone, mm. but it was just like I was being just um, under this magnifying glass mm. of being like dairy and just people walking by. Some people wanting to say something, not knowing what to say. Yeah. Some people just not even want to look at you. And it was just this feeling of like, it, I don't know, it felt gross. It was almost, it was vulnerable and it was raw. And it's like every, it was like you were this like special case. You know yeah. what I mean? And I never wanted to ever feel like that. Um, when it came to something like that. So I, I remember that fucking feeling. Yeah. And yeah. I, I know what you're saying. Like, it's weird. And then you have to, and you said something really interesting too. Like I was learning how to tell people like, mm -hmm. Oh my God. Yeah. You have yeah. to learn how to tell that fucking story. So everyone knew when you went back to school, yeah, because like they, they were allowed. Well, it was an excused absence. Oh, for everybody. Around. Yeah, the school could go, you. and they wouldn't count it as against Whoa. you if you wanted. Yeah, it was really nice. Wow. Good. Did mm -hmm. you go to a small school? Yeah, it's funny. Or was your dad like a local hero? My dad was a local hero. Yeah, yeah. he was one of those jetpack guys. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm like an excuse to <laughs> fly around and shit. Like, hey, it's Ryan's dad. <clears throat> no, we just were, we were popular in the sense that we played all the sports, oh, and there wow. were two of us. You know what I mean? Like that's hilarious that kind of shit imagine so, having that mary kate and ashley power that, that if you if something tragic happens to you they're like this happened to all of us yeah not just the sickler boys you were you were that popular we were pretty that's popular. how i know i was a loser because nobody you. came <laughs> from school Nobody even but knew. your dad didn't tell anybody. That's we true. told Africa. Oh, that's <laughs> like I didn't even know to be mad about that. <clears throat> I called the school if the I could day throw my a dad football, died. Football, I would have had friends <laughs> to sit with in the pews. You yeah. goddamn yeah. athletes, <laughs> you get everything. It helped. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I want my kids to play. I am still friends with those guys from sixth wow. and seventh grade. That's sport. But then we became way more popular after yeah. that because our mom had split already. Mm -hmm. So now we're just three kids in high school living in an apartment by oh. ourselves with no dad and no parents. And everyone's coming to our place oh, to yeah. drink and hang out. Yeah. So we oh. became popular. But again, people are like, oh, it's cool. I'm like, do you understand why we're all here? It's yeah. not cool. Party That's what I'm saying. Yeah, twins right. house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dead dad party number three, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it's what I'm, what you were saying. Like, you got to put, you got to earn this. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? You're this handing thing, out party invitations this, with like yeah. matching, like two skull and crossbones on yeah, it. This thing come easy. You know, this, this Saturday night keg right here is a lot of trauma behind this fucking keg. <laughs> Oh my God, that's funny. Yeah, the reason oh. you had a good time in high school is because I had a terrible time in high school. We took the hit. 
<laughs> so we could get wasted. That is so funny. That's the truth. How long did your mom split before your dad passed? Not long. Like two, well, they had had problems the yeah. whole time, but they they split once, got back together for like eh, a shaky two years, yeah. you know, at best, and then she split probably four. 14 and then he died at 16. Oh my god. So like gosh. a couple years, yeah. Wow. Yeah, but uh um, How'd your dad pass? Heart attack. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So yeah. we woke up like so differently. Like I it's god, I'm so glad we're talking about this because I often I still wonder like would it have been better to to watch him die mm. of a slow death but yet selfishly get to tell him everything I've wanted to tell him. Mm. You know what I mean? And I, I know this impending doom is coming. Let me, you know, you're a good writer. Maybe if I'd have known you, you could have wrote some words for me to say mm. to him. You know, you're Aww. a good writer. I mean, I did speak at my mom's funeral. There you which go. Which is when I caught the performance. <laughs> 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 I was up there like, you're I got to light, girl. <laughs> I got to get more stage and time. And Shirley's <laughs> up next. Come on. She's hopping <laughs> at the fit. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I think about that too because I I wish I'd lost her. Yeah, this do you is a wish, fucked up way to say. I want to hear it. Do you? I wish, wish I had was... lost her the same way eight years later because I could have, like you said, asked her all the questions I had. I mean, it was like I was too young to know that, what, how much even time you had. How left. much even time Everything. I had? What to ask her? Yeah. I mean, when she was in the hospital, kind of right before she really went downhill she did this thing where she wrote me a letter in a journal and had my dad give it to me while she's in the hospital. Oh. And she goes, this is like our secret private place to talk about anything you want to talk about. And we can write back and forth to each other. Dad's going to be our delivery man while I'm in the hospital. And so she wrote me this beautiful letter. I still have it. S gave it to my dad to give to me. I got it. I wrote her a letter in it. And then she wrote back to me. It only happened like a few times that we wrote back to each other. And then she, you know, couldn't anymore. Um, oh. And I look back at it and I'm like, you're writing about Jeff from third grade and how you That's your like life, him. Though. And you stared at the back of his head for an hour yesterday. Like, this is what you're talking to your mom about. But it's like, what are you going to say? Like, when did you lose your virginity? Like, you, you don't know to ask that stuff when you're eight. And uh, after she died, I kept writing to her in that journal oh. for like years because at the time I was like, "You still have that religion? I still have you it. You got to do yeah. something with that." Oh, I don't know what to do with it. It's so sad. What? I mean, there are pages. I mean, that it's are, an easy thing to say one woman show, but fuck I that. Know. You can do whatever you want with that. Well, there are literally pages in it. There's some pages where I write, and I, I haven't looked at it in a long time. I'll be honest. And then there are pages that are just like the hardest, like pen script, just everything that was going on, like where I couldn't think of what else to do and you're like oh my god look at this kid this kid is in so much pain yeah that it it really makes you sad but i'm so glad i have it and she scrapbooked a lot so we have a lot of scrapbooks i mean back when scrapbooking like wasn't a thing like back when she was in high school and college and you know just all these like ticket stubs and you know photo booth memories and like she was involved in like every activity she's like a cheerleader and speech and debate and you know 4-h and like drama she's in everything and just like tall and beautiful and popular and you have all these these detailed accounts of how amazing she was and you're just like i suck like i'm i'm nothing like this person and then um like six six seven years ago my youngest sister found a box of all of her journals oh. from like fourth grade up until she got pregnant with me Whoa. in my have grandma's basement or in my grandma's attic. I have only read the one when she's in college, everything else. I think my youngest sister read everything. I didn't read the other ones. Um, I think, think she has, will, a or are you not ready or I think I will. I just, I mean, this is weird to say, but part of me like wasn't that interested in what she was like in fifth grade because I've read mine from fifth grade and I'm like, this is that'll only change nothing. when you're if you become a mom. Right. Because I'll tell you what, you're going to yeah. look back and you're going to look back at eight year old you yeah. and you're going to feel so fucking sad and sorry for eight year old you. Yeah. You know, you're going to be like, good God. Let's take a quick break and tell you about our sponsor, Omax Health. Living with chronic pain is the worst. It's more than a feeling of discomfort. It can affect your whole life. 
Many of my listeners probably have some type of pain that has prevented them from relaxing and sleeping or stopped them from exercising. Perhaps it's been ongoing for a few weeks now and hasn't improved with any of the treatments they've tried. I've had this thing going on in my, from the back of my neck across my right shoulder blade. I don't know, it feels like I tore a muscle. It was killing me. I took the roll on, I put it on. I'm telling you, within minutes, it worked. It worked, it, it kept it uh, pain-free for a while. It felt so good, I was blown away. Um, I won't use anything else for it. I'm not putting all that other stuff on. I'm just using that roll on right now. And there's a, a lotion that's really good too. Uh, Omax Health is here. If you're looking to get rid of nagging muscle and joint pain immediately, I'm telling you it was immediate, while providing long lasting recovery, then you need to try the natural breakthrough pain relief solution, Cryo Freeze CBD Roll On, developed by Omax Health. This non prescription triple action pain relief roll on is specifically formulated to block pain receptors, reduce inflammation, and improve muscle and joint flexibility. The best part is this 100% natural CBD powered remedy works its magic within 10 minutes of application and relief lasts up to eight hours, much longer than the over-counter products. Uh, Omax Health is offering my listeners 20% off a full bottle cryo freeze pain relief roll on plus free shipping. I mean, come on, 20% off and free shipping. The discount also applies toward any product site-wide. Go to omaxhealth.com today and enter code HONEYDEW. That's omaxhealth.com and enter code HONEYDEW to get 20% off cryo-freeze and site-wide. Now let's get back to the do. I, I, it's funny you said this kid was in so much pain. In seventh grade, I wrote a song called Cloven Hoof Bitch about my mom. And you just may, re you just may remember this. That's what it was really called. Cloven you hoof just bitch. remembered Cloven Hoof also Bitch. Also, I would sing that every morning, <laughs> brushing my teeth. Cloven Hoof Bitch. <laughs> also inspired Cloven Hoof learning through the church about uh, the Cloven Hoof. Yeah. And I remember I'm in. I'll, I can't believe this. I'm in lunch. We had a big, you know, cafeteria in middle school, seventh grade. We're sitting at this table. It's like eight people to a yeah. table or whatever, ten people. And I'm showing it to my best friend Matt Schilling, and we're laugh. We're dying laughing how dumb this fucking yeah. shit is. And the lunch lady comes up and she's like, hey, can I see that? And she takes it and I'm like, ah. Oh. And it's literally about my mom and it's called Clovenhoof Bitch. And she gives it back to me and she goes, it's pretty good. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's incredible. Didn't tell on me, didn't report me to oh. the principal novel. Just like, here you go. It's I mean, that's good. a like, scene in a movie yeah, or like, a show. Hey, how sure. about baby saying, hey, are you hurting inside? Yeah. Or can we talk just you and me outside? And she's like, that rhymed. <laughs> <laughs> like I think I know your mom. You you rhymed bitch and ditch. <laughs> that's wow. <laughs> what she is and where you want to put her. I'm impressed. <laughs> it's like that's hilarious. That happened. I mean, wow. I uh yeah, I that makes me again wonder if my teacher knew cuz yeah, I got sent to a therapist that worked for the school and then my dad sent me to a therapist who I actually really liked who would just like let me play she's just like here's a sandbox and you can tell a story and like inevitably everybody in the sandbox died and she's like why did they die I'm like that's just what happens and uh <laughs> then I went to a hospice support group with What's my that? younger sister um so this is real this is real fucked up so <laughs> I don't know if every hospice does this, but okay. our hospice did. Uh, shout out to Modesto Hospice. Uh, they put me and my sister in like a support group for kids whose parents not only died of cancer, they mixed us in with kids whose parents were alive and still had it. Oh, yeah, but, but, but so you could see what it was going to So those I kids guess. could see like, hey, you should... I don't know what's going to be so like for you. That's awful. It's so awful. And I didn't even think of it when we were in it. But I'm like, some of those kids, their parents were still alive. But I mean, hospice, you know, you're it's you know what's going to happen. But like, we're all like six to 11 years old, maybe. And we're oh. just in there like drawing pictures of our parents. And like, it's it was all I remember about it is that we paper mache mason jar candles and then they had us all stand in a line up front. And I don't know if our remaining parents came to watch or I feel like there were people there and they had us light the candles and they said, whenever you feel comfortable blowing it out, you do that. 
And then we all just, and some kids were just like, I'm done. And, <laughs> and then some of Where us. Where can were I like, dip this in gas and light it on fire? <laughs> and then <laughs> some of us were just like, <sighs> we're just like staring at that candle. Like it was the last so breath our parents like, took. <laughs> oh God. I remember I was one of the last ones. Just like, <laughs> this is burn, the last God. time. I remember a hospice <laughs> gave us oh, Disneyland geez. tickets oh, that had just God. been donated to hospice. And it was like a week after my mom died and we had just gone back to school and they called my dad. Like, so we have Disneyland <sighs> tickets for you guys. And he's like, Oh, okay, thanks. And they're like, but you have to use it this weekend. And yeah, so my dad we just bla- like we got blackout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my dad just like threw us all in the van, and Jesus. we're like, cool, like Disneyland. And I have pictures of me. My mom just died. I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> 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 it was the Super Bowl of childhood trauma, and. <laughs> That really is. There are pictures of me in the van with like a backwards hat on, pigtails, the the most oval glasses you've ever seen. Like I'm chubby and I got, you know, just an outfit that doesn't match. And I posted it for a throwback once. And I think I said like, this kid's mom is dead. Like (laughs) it's so, it's so apparent that my mom died moments ago (laughs) and nobody knows how to brush my hair at home i mean i think we all had dreadlocks for six months because i mean that's not your first priority it's just like let's just get them to school so they're not you know traumatized and uneducated but i mean yeah it's yeah nobody was making sure we were color coordinating right yeah in the months to come uh but yeah the uh the find the finding Listen, stuff four kids at yeah. Disneyland is like 40 kids at Disneyland four right. kids at Disneyland after their mom just died yeah. i mean yeah fuck i know your dad i mean what kind of dude is your dad just straightforward like you say like yeah you're a good writer just like yeah, that yeah. like what does he do he ne- he was a music teacher okay. when we were younger for like 10 years and then he remarried uh my stepmom um who uh i do a joke about now my new hour has like 12 minutes about my mom dying and i i say on stage i go we we call my stepmom mom because when my dad married her like nobody was using it so we were like, yeah, sure, be mom. Like, if you had a, titles Vegas, yeah, if your principal quit and then you got a new principal, they wouldn't be like, this is Barry. It's yeah, like, that's no, right. your new principal. So uh, we call her mom. So my mom now, uh, she was a, a real estate agent when my dad married her and like so successful, like had a boat and like multiple houses and was living. We moved into her house and there was plenty of room. Like, she was killing it she was eight years older than my dad like how'd they meet and they met quickly this huh? is well she she worked with my dad's mom okay. so she heard about just like my mom being sick and i guess just like gave us money like just like gave my grandma money and was like please like i want to help with their hospital bills like that's a horrible situation and other people had done that and my dad uh, called her when we went to Disneyland because they hadn't met or anything. And he was just like, hey, you know, uh, I just want to say thank you. That was, you know, very nice what you did. Um, we're going to be in Southern California. would love to, like, take you out to dinner to say thank you so much. And he, she was like, oh, I'm engaged. And he's like, bitch, I'm not hitting on you. Like, I, my wife died, like, weeks ago. Like, I'm saying my kids will come. Like, we're just trying yeah. to say thank you. And she was like, oh, it's just, you know, it's not a good idea, but, you know. And they, you know, started talking because my dad, I don't know if my dad was like this before my mom died or if my mom dying made him like this because my mom dying made me like this where I'm like, I get into it. I don't do small talk. I'm like, you happy? No, let's talk about it. Oh, so amen. They, he and my stepmom just started talking about her so she's relationship. Engaged she's they, engaged. Okay. And somehow they talked about the fact that she, they were having problems or something. And my dad just told her like, look, I don't know you at all, but you seem like an amazing person to just give money to a family you don't know at and all. And I got these four kids. Right. You know, like. <laughs> Not at all. He was just like, look, he wasn't hitting on her. He was just like, look, you deserve to be happy. Like you should, you know, I don't but know. But she went from there. being engaged to whoever that dude was. Yeah. To very quickly marrying your dad. Not within yeah. a year. Within a year. Less than a year. Yeah. Like and August to June, I think you said. Right? Yeah. And yeah. it's not like they got off the phone. Like we're together. Like right. she, 
she, I think, went to therapy. Pack the shit. We're moving. <laughs> All right, technical difficulties, but we're back. You like how I said that? Like, it's my show? Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I don't know how exactly it, it went down with my stepmom and, and her, her ex, but I I just know that after they talked, she... You and said they might have gone to therapy? They might have. I, I don't that's know. really fucking mature. I mean, that's a... Yeah. yeah well, I mean, she was, you know, she's in her 40s at that point. So she, she I think tried to make it work with him or they whatever but they broke up i don't know how long after i don't know the exact timeline but i know my dad she and my dad talked on the phone like in august and i know they were dating by christmas um and they they started talking on the phone because they lived you know five hours six hours apart so they like fell in love over the phone like it was right when my dad got a cell phone and they were just talking all day all the time and really got to know each other that way and then they met halfway and it's so cute to hear them talk about just being like like my stepmom will talk about like I, I just thought like oh my gosh like i hope we're attracted to each other like i never even seen a picture of him like oh, where wow. they i Nothing. mean love is blind that they were the original love is blind but they got to know each other and uh they they met finally and they were just like we were like we were best friends over the phone i just was so i was so scared it wouldn't be there and they met and they were just like oh my gosh like you're it and so yeah they got they That's got engaged great. pretty quickly and um married and then we all moved and i remember my dad telling me that he was going to propose and you your life just feels like a movie i was like he's like yeah we're gonna move i'm like great like sounds good and then we moved and i was like oh this is kind of this is great we moved to um temecula oh that's where okay and uh so we we actually moved to murrieta which is right next to temecula Mm -hmm. and we moved when i was in fifth grade which is a rough time to move and then we moved again uh in sixth grade to like a bigger house and but still in this that area no in a slightly different list so that i had to change schools and so i was going to a different district going into middle school so i went to middle school knowing nobody and it was rough so that was a rough few years but weirdly enough fourth grade the year after my mom died great year of school for me you really remember that i do i remember it being really good like i really i loved all my friends i was like doing uh i like ran for student president or something i didn't get it but i like was doing speeches and stuff like i i did like i won some speech contest i forget what it was about maybe it was about i remember i wrote about my mom dying and i remember a a teacher saying on stage she wrote an amazing essay about losing her mom or something and um that's another thing about telling people is when i make new friends i it's such a big part of who i am i feel like i have to tell them so it feels weird when people don't know that about me mm-hmm. which is another reason i think my sisters and i maybe make jokes about it because we're like this is a way to get that out there um because it, it is weird to just go like well my mom died or, but usually people ask about your parents and you go oh my dad and my stepmom and they go oh, are your parents divorced and you go no no my mom died and it's fine and it was a long time ago um even though it's not and it right. never will be never but you got to say that <laughs> Do you, are you close with your stepmom uh not really no. i mean i wouldn't say we're close we're we're but you good. always got along no no we did not always get along we i mean that's a lot think about yeah i'm thinking i try as you're talking i'm putting myself in her shoes like oh she's an incredible person you, <laughs> yeah you're taking on like first of all your part your new husband's wife just passed yeah. that in itself is a, a layer that could ruin anything. Yeah. And on top of it, four kids under the age of 10 yeah. that are also now coming to live in my home too. It's a that's Yeah. And she had never been married before. Did she have kids? She'd been married in her 20s. Did she did And she then have she'd kids? gotten divorced. No, she has no, no. kids. Okay. Yeah. She uh she can't have children, thank God, because oh. we didn't need any more. Um <laughs> but she always wanted you did. kids. Yeah, yeah. I think her ex had a kid and she always wanted kids. Um, but she's just, she's the polar opposite of my mom in every way. My mom was like stay at home mom, very creative, um, you know, very emotional, uh, in good and bad ways. And my stepmom is like, she is like a career woman. She is, she does not let her emotions control her. She is very like, I, she takes care of people, but she's also like, she takes good care of herself. She's very, 
you know, self-sufficient. And, um, what I always say is like, she was, she was less like a mom and more like a role model in a lot okay. of ways. Cause yeah. like, I mean, she, I remember when I realized like, Oh, she kind of raised me just as long as my mom did maybe slightly longer, arguably. And, um, when I was younger, when they first got married, the first few years were really hard. And I finally like confronted her one day and I was just like, why don't you like me? Like, I feel like you don't like me. And we were arguing and my dad kind of came in and was like, you guys have different love languages, the love language thing. And he's like, you know, your mom likes acts of service. You like, you know, quality time and physical touch or whatever. And my stepmom's just not like a touchy feely person. She's mm -hmm. with her dog, but not really with, uh, with other people. And I had to just learn not to take that personally because it didn't have anything to do with like her not loving us or anything like that. It was just like, she's just different. And when I got older, I was able to see from her perspective and put myself in her shoes and go, oh my gosh, like you went from kind of just like balling out <laughs> and having nobody to worry about but yourself to there's now five, five people, people living yeah. and these there you got four of them are children between the ages of three and 10. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's it's, nuts. That's like nuts. it's crazy and like my dad and they're was, still together they're still the, they're so I they're mean, so happy they're it's been you know 16 years now wow. 17 years yeah. i guess and uh they're like the best couple they're the best couple i know they're they're best friends they have so much fun together um but even that was hard it was hard because my dad became a realtor after they got married then he was working like every day like i mean monday through sunday working all the time and because my stepmom was a little bit of a workaholic and um it it was like my dad my dad like took better care of himself like he got more attractive like uh he he just like kind of revamped his life a little bit is how it felt so it, in a weird way that I didn't recognize at the time but I did years later in therapy I'm like oh I think I kind of resented my dad because he got to have this whole new life really quickly and he almost got like a second chance not that he was going to divorce my mom or ever would have or anything like that but it was like he went through this horrible traumatic thing and then he got to be happy pretty quickly and and also have his kids be financially stable and yeah like you're not bouncing from home to home and apartment to apartment yeah and, you and know, in a better school district yeah. yeah you know like all that stuff but i it's hard it was hard too because i also i wish he had waited a little longer sure yeah. but i also don't because it was so great for him i'm like you de he deserved to be happy i mean he'd been through hell um, but, but also I have, a happy him is healthier and better for you guys too. You right. know, you can, you'll never see that when you're 10 years old. I know. I you're know. not, we're not, even if someone came and told you that you wouldn't, you'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. And it would have been hard to move at any point, but there, there have been times and I've talked to him about it where I'm just like, I kind of wish you'd waited like another year at least. And he was just like, I don't really agree with you. And I'm like, all right, that's fine. Like I get it. But, and it, there's no way to ever know. Um, also they, they were newlyweds with four kids, which is not like the best situation. So they would send us back to Northern California, like every school break. Like, so we'd go for like two weeks over the summer, a week at Christmas, a week at Easter, um, to stay with my grandparents, my mom's oh, okay, parents. Good. That's nice. So, and my mom's parents adopted baby twin girls, like a year before my mom died. So they also oh, had like a new like, I don't want to say project because they're children that they love very much and they're 20 now and my grandparents are in their seventies, but like they, they had kids, my youngest sister's age. So I would go, we'd go with my grandma. My grandma's got like, she's carting around like six kids. She got like this huge van and we got really close to my grandma in a way that we wouldn't have if we oh, lived 20 minutes her away. Her babies, babies. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you would, th I'm glad to hear you got close. To yeah. Her like that. Oh, we stayed with her a month out of every year. Yeah. I mean, she was, she like helped raise us. She loved that. Yeah, she yeah, did. She, we awesome. talk about it. We talk about it a lot now. Cause, um, you know, we just, we would have had like sleepovers with her occasionally mm -hmm. if we lived near them. Um, but it wouldn't have been like it was like, we have such a comfort level with her, um, that I really appreciate. And I love so much. I mean, I had a joke about her in my special 
that or in my hour before I shot the special and I ran it past her beforehand and she laughed and then like the next day texted me and was kind of like eh, I don't know about that and I was like it's gone it's gone anything I never want to upset you like I'm we'll never do anything um to to jeopardize our relationship because she really she really did she became the maternal figure yeah. in our lives because um again my stepmom was fantastic and and took care of us in so many ways and like made us so much healthier too like i'm so much healthier i have such a strong work ethic because of her um but didn't have that ma that natural maternal right. touchy feely thing like redo at bedtime like just didn't have that instinct which is understandable um so and i think she had like a rough childhood that i i don't know too many details about but knowing all of that um definitely helped but it didn't make it any easier and there was a, a certain amount of like us versus them a little bit because it felt like my dad was in this love bubble and the four of us were kind of like just still mourning and adjusting to our new lives um so that was like an interesting dynamic that i think we're still we're still working through as adults um because you know my sisters and i are so close and i think sometimes my my dad probably feels like we have a secret group he can't in like penetrate um which you know i don't i don't think is is that bad i understand that it's probably hard as a parent to look at your kids and go like what are are they are they what are, is this are they against me or whatever yeah. but it's not like that it's just we're just our own unit in a way that he can't really understand in the same way like you know we're never going to be in his relationship with my mom like it's we just have our own clubhouse going you do and and also like i mean i can tell you just from the hindsight like you're 26 mm -hmm. yeah 30 year old you is going to be different 35 right. year old you is going to be different 40 year old you know what i mean yeah. like it changes and, and um yeah no i think it's great that you guys are all tight and stuff you, you you we were talking before we started recording you said off mic that you did the pete holmes show we love pete holmes mm -hmm. here. um and you said you said something about a relative and i think you said you uh, an uncle reached out yeah, to yeah my mom's Are you older talking about that yeah yeah my mom's older brother reached out to me after he heard that episode how long we, ago would you say that was they, like within the year like a year and a half ago okay. maybe and um just you know text me and had texted me when i moved to la and was like hey we live nearby if you ever need anything and I'm so like, they're oh, out here they're out here yeah um but they lived in colorado when we were growing up so we didn't see them that much and so we weren't like super close to them. And he reached out after he heard the episode of me talking about losing my mom and we got coffee and it was like, it what was, was crazy. Like? It, well, it's just, it's crazy. Cause you just realize like, oh my gosh, nobody's over it. Like nobody's over it. Everybody has different You things. never get over it. You get better yeah. with it, but you never get over it. You'll never yeah. get over it. You know, time and, and whatever, therapy, whatever it is for you that works. You yeah. get better with it over time, but you'll never get over that. Yeah, and day to day it's so different because yeah. some days I'm really angry about it mm -hmm. that I that I lost my mom. I get angry when I see my aunt with her daughters. I get I get angry that I don't have that or I get really sad that I don't have that. Um, I get angry at my mom sometimes for not, um, writing us letters or anything, knowing that this could be a possibility. I mean, I had, uh, a, some like distant cousin, some distant relative mail me a bunch of her printed out emails from that time. Cause she had been emailing people updates and mm -hmm. they had like circulated to like people kept forwarding them and it was like a lot of like testimonial stuff about god and whatnot and you read these letters over the course of a year and they're like so heartbreaking because each one is like i'm so hopeful like things are going great like i still have my hair and then like the next one's like we got some rough news and like mm. it's just the back and forth of it is and there's you know she did like a she spoke at church once and did the whole thing of like if if this is what god wants like i submit to that and i'm just like you gave up like and you react to all these things where you go why if you why wouldn't you have acknowledged because as far as i can tell from everyone i've talked to in my family she never talked to anybody about dying like i don't think 
she thought she was going to. I really don't. Mm -hmm. And the only thing she ever said to my grandma was, mom, if I die, make sure my kids are creative. That's the only thing she ever said about dying. Um, well, but, you've done that. Uh, I mean, you know, that's you live in that. That's that's another thing I say on stage when people get uncomfortable with the dead mom jokes. I go, "Do you guys think I'd be this successful if I had a live mom?" <laughs> do you, really? Do you think if I'd have had two more hugs, yeah, I'd be a creative writing major with a lot of debt. Okay, all right. This is the only way. Um, but yeah, day to day, you're like some days you're really angry, and then some days you're sad, and then some days you're like, "Wow, this made me who I am." And uh, I don't know, maybe it was just that day, but he was like, he was still angry about it. And I, I remember just thinking like, oh my gosh, like I, I, I just can't imagine losing one of my sisters. Right. And so when I think about my aunt, and my uncle, I get so, so sad because I can't imagine losing a child either, but I haven't had a child yet. So I don't fully understand. And it makes me scared to have kids. And I know this is a common thing. I'm sure you guys have talked about it on some episode where you, if you lose a parent, young you assume that you're gonna die at that same age oh, um i, I do you exactly have that? man exactly yeah. at the, my dad's age i went through i mean it cost me over 10 grand in medical bills it was the worst Whoa. health year of my life oh, was 42 no. and that's when he died it was oh, crazy it was that's crazy. awful yeah so it wasn't just a feeling it was like things were it, actually happening yeah it really did happen oh, that's and awful. it was real close too and they they were checking me for cancer that's why i was saying they were checking me for that for what your mom had they were checking me for oh. leukemia they were checking me for all kinds of stuff and then i'll never forget going in and the lady said to me it just still gives me chills i've said it before but I went in to, for the results and I'm waiting to hear whether I do or don't have cancer. And she's like, the doctor's going to come in and talk to you, but I want to tell you, you don't have cancer. And I was oh, like, that, oh, what a nice. She goes, how does oh. that feel? And I was like, I just feel relieved. This has been such a process. She goes, listen to me. It's my job every day to tell someone whether they do or don't have cancer. And a lot of times I tell people they have cancer. Yeah. And today I got to tell someone they didn't oh. go celebrate that. And I was like, oh, I gave her a hug. I was like, thank you so much. It was, oh, it was great. And then it was, oh, it wasn't, it was the beginning of everything else. You know what yeah. I mean? But it was, it was, it was a year, it was a full fucking year of in and out of the hospital, in and out of specialist, in and out, like yeah. just nonstop. And at the time too, I had just split with my daughter's mother. So all that shit is going oh. on there, you know, and I'm learning how to be a dad and a single parent at the same time. And, but to go back to your dad again, like you said, he got healthier. It's so important because I wasn't healthy. Mm. I was doing everything to take care of my daughter and nothing to take care of me. Yeah. And there is no taking care of your kids if you're not taking care of yourself. Right. And it's very hard to, you almost feel guilty putting yourself up there because your child's everything, you know, yeah. and you want to take care of them. And especially when they're one, two, they, they, they can't do shit. Yeah. They fucking need you. It's not like I can go, go make toast, you know? Seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my dad talks about like, the day after the like the first day he sent us all and to i had school. one ps not four right Sorry. yeah no yeah. he he talks about he's talked to me he doesn't talk about it a lot but he's talked about you know like the first day he sent us all to school after my mom died she died like right before we went back to school and he just said he like he laid down in bed and he was just like oh my gosh like if i don't if i don't get up like i i will never get up like i have to i he's like i have four kids like i can't i cannot fall apart right now like i just yeah. can't and he didn't and he you know and that and that is what makes me go yeah man get married as quickly as you want like you you took care of my mom he watched my mom die for a yes. year and a half you know like he watched his wife die while having four kids while working he's the only one working He's making a teacher salary, a music teacher salary. Right. Like just, I mean, I can't even imagine how hard that was. Um, and I think, you know, only recently has he kind of like started talking to us a little bit more about it sometimes, but for a long time, he was like, he didn't really even want to talk about it. And I think it's cause like sometimes you, there's too much pain. So you just have to kind of push it down yeah. and ignore it for a long time until you have like, like when you're getting sick 
and you have too many tour dates coming up and your body is like in survival mode and then you're like oh i have three days off and your body just shuts down yeah, like and you get so shit. ill yeah. yeah you get so sick and you're like why am i sick the first i'm finally resting and it's like because you finally have time to be sick right so um yeah it's it's been interesting to watch how everybody in my family um has dealt with it over the years and in what waves they've dealt with it mm -hmm. and weirdly enough my my grandma and grandpa are the ones who talk about her the most easily and and seem to be the seem to be the most at peace with it um which you know who knows but that was such a godsend to be with my grandparents so often growing up because it was like that was the place we could go to talk about mom right. that was the place we could go to look at pictures and learn about her and ask for stories and um feel close to her and that side of the family so you know it's again silver lining it's great that you yeah. have that though mm -hmm. so can we shift gears for a second and talk about because i'm curious if any of this plays into um you were engaged yes oh of course it plays into yeah. it yeah yeah i was engaged last year for a couple months and um it, it didn't work out obviously. And it was, I mean, we both dodged a bullet quite frankly. Uh, but I, I realized after the fact, like that wasn't the right person for me, but I was so convinced in the moment. And I just, I just wanted to be settled. I just really wanted to be with my person. And, um, you know, I loved him very much and there were, you know, a lot of different things, but I, I think I, I got engaged for a lot of reasons, but, um, I think I, I really wanted, and we got, we got engaged at my grandparents' house, like in that orchard that I grew up in. And like my whole family met him that night. Like it was this huge thing. It was like a beautiful day. Yeah. Like my sisters were part of the proposal, like the perfect proposal, like so amazing. And when it didn't work out, I remember just like sobbing on my bed to my sister who had driven out to like be with me. And I was just like, I was like, every time I lose somebody, it's like mom's dying again. Oh, I was just about to say. It's, every time. It is. And it will be. Yeah. But every, every breakup, every, anything that makes you sad to yeah. the point of emotionally crying and letting yes. it all out. It's, it's that that old familiar feeling yes. of this. So it always takes you back to that. Yeah, always. it always does. And particularly losing somebody. And like once my dad and my stepmom were, were married and working a lot, we had nannies during the school week, mm -hmm. not on the weekends. I was watching them on the weekends um, from the time I was like 10. But when during the week we needed someone to like pick us up and make dinner and everything. So there were these women who were like 20 to 26, like my age now taking care of mm. these four girls. Um, and it's a temporary job. It's not something you usually stay with. So these women would come in and out of our lives for like eight months to a year. So we're losing people Nonstop. that we're getting close to. Over, it's like we're being re-traumatized every year. Mm -hmm. And I did not even realize how uh, traumatic that was for me until I got into therapy in like the last year. And I'm like, you know what? Uh, Cause I was like, why is it so hard for me when I lose people or why don't I trust people to stay because my mom wanted to stay. It's not like she didn't want to. And then I go, Oh, because all these women kept leaving after my mom died. So when I'm with somebody and then my dad got remarried. So when I'm in a relationship, my fears are you're going to meet someone you love more than me, which is Check. I'm over here checking off my yeah. list. With you. Check. <laughs> like, you're going to meet someone you love more than me. Um, which is how on some level, probably what I felt like as a kid, my dad met someone he loved more than us. Um, and then if that doesn't happen, they'll just leave for whatever reason. I mean, those women all left for different reasons. They were going to have their own family. They got married. Uh, Check. they had a kid, you know, whatever. whatever they just, they got You're bored. Out. Like they're abandoned. They moved to New York, like whatever it is, they were gone. So I'm like, they're going to disappear one day. They're gonna be out of my life and I have to prepare for that. And if they stay and none of that happens, they're going to die. So <laughs> yeah, that's right. there's no, there Check. is no situation where anybody stays but with they me. are gonna die they the are way. gonna <laughs> at die at some point i know but i could point. go first you could, so you could. but like <laughs> it i remember sitting in therapy just going there's no way out i am always gonna lose people and it is it is every day with my sisters i'm always scared of losing my sisters 
because that's the one thing I cannot wrap my head around. And I remember the day, cause I, I gave the ring back and stuff. Cause like some stuff happened, but the, like an hour before the first like event in the string of events that made me go like, we're not engaged anymore happened. I literally said to my ex fiance, I don't know what I would do without you. If anything happened to you or my sisters, I, I don't know how I would do. I don't know how I'd keep doing comedy. Like, I don't know how I would go on. But and let me then, see if I can find out. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it, you know what? I think I'm going to. I'm going to roll the dice. No. Here you oh, go. my That's God. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then some stuff happened that weekend where I was like, I felt, you know, it was just, it was like, it. he just turned out to not be you know, the, the person I thought he was in certain ways and like everybody's layered and complicated. Um, so it's, it's some days I'm angry about it. And then some days I'm just like, okay, well we all make mistakes. Um, but it was, it felt like a piano dropped yeah. on my head and I was like, this is what happened. And you get, you get angry at yourself for believing you could be happy where you go, you dumbass of course this was gonna happen you've been here before fucking live like you've been here like what's wrong with you that you thought the universe or god or whoever was gonna let you have this this moment for this you. Mo yeah mm -hmm. and i was so unbelievably happy with that guy i mean we got we got engaged like i mean less than a year after i said i love you I mean, it was... How long were you together? Not that long. Like a year and a couple months. Okay. So we were... We moved in together and then we got engaged. And I mean, I I wanted to be married. I wanted to be settled. I wanted to be married It before. probably would have worked for you if you had four kids and your husband had just died. You <laughs> right, know what I mean? Yeah, that, it that, that was <laughs> the missing ingredient. That what, was the special it's sauce. It's the same thing we talk yeah. about. You can't be at this keg party without <laughs> that shit over there. Yeah. Well, and it was so fun. I mean, I did, I did like a whole Conan set about him and about how he'd never been through anything that like traumatic like his parents had gotten divorced when he was a kid and i remember asking him like was that really hard like did you wish they'd stayed together and he was like he's like i just didn't like going between houses he's like yeah, i didn't really feel that way and i was like oh okay like i didn't i didn't know how to i didn't know how to talk to him i felt like he had i spent so much time in therapy going like i just feel like we don't connect on a certain level because he doesn't he hasn't been through your mom didn't and, die in your living room? Right, exactly. No, no sorry. That's, yeah, we're I not. Mean, this isn't going to work you out. You didn't try to close <laughs> your dead mother's eyes oh, when you were eight years old God. and realize it's not like a movie where you can just go <laughs> they Ooh, keep and float her into the river? <laughs> they stay the half river. open. Yeah. And, uh, nah, I haven't done nah, that. I haven't yet. done this, that. This isn't going to work out. Yeah. No, it really, but it's truly, once we broke up, I was like, oh, I need somebody who's been through some stuff. Some like, shit. I can't go through another, I can't be with someone else who, like, has an acquaintance die and goes, like, that's the first person I knew to die. Like, someone they didn't even know. Like, it was crazy. And it's not, it wasn't his fault or anything, obviously. I'm glad his life's been pretty good. But, um, and he had a great family. And I think maybe some part of me wanted, to uh maybe feel more well adjusted or something i don't i don't know it's my psychiatrist called my relationship with him a mirage mm. she was like she's like i think you know there was i was like it's hard though because i was so happy and i felt really safe and i felt like i found somebody who i could be with and she goes yeah but you you kind of made that happen it was like it was like i i found somebody and in the beginning of our relationship, I remember telling friends of mine, like, I just don't know. There's just something like missing. And they were like, he's so cute. He's so nice. Like, just give him a chance. And I remember the first time he told me I love, he loved me. I was like, what? Like he did? Like where? Really? Okay. Like it's, and then I felt like so in love with him. And I was like, I loved living with him. Like I loved having, I felt like I had a partner, like, and so to then have it fall apart a month after I find out I have, an hour special on Netflix. I mean, I oh. got engaged. I got engaged. I was engaged for a month. I found out I got the hour. Uh, and then a month later, my engagement falls apart. And then I'm in couples therapy for two months. We finally break up like late August. And then I have September and October to 
finish my hour, which changed a lot. Yeah, I bet. As you can imagine. Yeah. It w- the f- opening joke was no longer, I'm engaged. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Which would have been so annoying. Can you imagine? <laughs> Listen, I got. I don't like, feel like writing some new shit. So yeah. my God. <laughs> like I had all these jokes about being engaged, and um, some of them made it into the special, but they were all now coded in. This didn't work out, which was so much more on theme with the rest of the hour, mm-hmm. which is like I'm in my twenties, I don't know what I'm doing, and like I just proved that. But you think you know. You're like, I'm engaged and maybe I'm young, but we haven't been together that long. But I'm so certain. I just know. And when I look at him, I know. And it it just, it knocks you on your ass. Like in this, and it's it's similar in that you're like, my mom will never die. Moms don't die. And then they do. And you go, okay, moms die. And then you go, I found my person. This is my soulmate. And then they're not. And you go, okay, well, I guess I don't know anything. And it it makes it real hard for the next guy yeah. <laughs> to say anything <laughs> yeah. about forever. Yeah. He's like, I want to be with you forever. You're like, mm, you think that you're new forever here. could be an hour. Yeah, you know exactly. what I'm saying? You don't know my I'm life. I'm like, all right, well, I was with somebody and I went down on him every day and he still did some stuff. So like, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I could keep him and that yeah, doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> like, all right. Let me ask you this. Cause we have to wrap this yeah, up here absolutely. in a little bit. I, especially since your trauma happened so early at eight. Um, what advice would you give to your 16 year old self? It's, and I love Oof. this because it's only 10 years ago for you. And like I said, it's, it would, I'll bet you when you're 30, that advice changes and yeah. it keeps going. But right now, what would you say to your 16 year old self? Well, when I was 16, when I was like 16 and a half is when I took, uh, when I started doing stand up. So, but the beginning of the year was like, the hardest year because I was severely depressed, really, really anxious. And uh, there's a joke about it in the special about me telling my dad I need to go to therapy and that I'd been like thinking about killing myself. And he pulled a knife out of the knife drawer and just went, be my guest. For and, real? Because he was mad at me. Yeah, because uh. we were arguing. And of course, he's, you know, he apologized to me uh, like a year ago for that. But the first time I brought it up to him, he was just like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Like, <laughs> like that was oh, one of my right. ankle knives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, absolutely. Um, and he did get me into therapy uh, shortly after, but we fought so much. And a lot of it was like, I was just so depressed. And uh, I think what I would probably tell my 16 year old self is like, probably just like, dad said something and he didn't mean it. (laughs) And you are, it feels like this feeling of being so depressed is never going to end. And I'll be honest with you, Taylor, it will be something you deal with for the rest of your life, but it's going to get so much better. You're going to have such an amazing life. And what you feel right now is going to feel so far away in just like a few years and right now you feel trapped by it and you feel like this is just my life and this is who I am and I'm broken, but it's, it's not. And you're, you're going to figure it out and your dad loves you. And, and you know, you just have to be patient with yourself and like be, I guess like kinder to yourself and not, uh, try not to be so afraid all the time because bad things are going to happen and being terrified of them happening is not going to stop them. So just try to try to enjoy it, I guess. Yeah, very good. And, uh, you know. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you. And thank this you for opening up. This is a lot. What? I know. That was a lot. This I, is. I appreciate it. it was, I mean, I really therapy this. session. Yeah. yeah. Um, will you want more time? Promote everything you'd like to promote, please. Oh, yes. Quarter Life Crisis on Netflix right now. Streaming. Uh, TTomComedy.com for tour dates and uh, at Taylor Tomlinson on all social media. Thank you so much. For real. This was great. Thank you. Uh, I am Ryan Sickler on all social media. RyanSickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week.